Uh, I have been a farmer for the last 25 or 30 years in Kapoho, so I'm representing the people down in Kapoho and some of the farmers. I have been an orchid farmer. If I may start with just introduce myself. I originally came to this country as age 18 as a refugee from a communist country. I arrived with $28 and not knowing anyone and I didn't speak the language. So since then, life has been wonderful to me in America, especially in Hawaii. I have been here for 30 years. With that, I would just like to read a little bit more of my story and what I wish to share with you people. So 25 years ago, I discovered the joy of growing orchids. The beautiful product has fed my children and sent them through school. I grew two nurseries into a commercial enterprise in the jungle of Puna that granted us a fairy tale of lifestyle. My nurseries employed many local individuals and provided income to their families. We have been blessed with such a beautiful profession that we have been able to promote the flowers of Hawaii. What a nice way to share aloha. I had a farm next to Green Lake Mountain protected by a deep crater, we had tremendous opportunity to have many more successes, not just for our business, but the local community. We were well known through the Kapoho co community. We have been promoting aloha through flowers, art, and music. I thought I was safe from the lava flow, but Mother Nature prov proved me wrong. On June 2nd, my friend had to rescue me at the Pohiki Harbor while my farm was being swallowed by the molten lava. All of our paradise is gone, taken by nature. I, like most farmers, have kept to myself because I have learned to be sustainable with the resources that are available to me. I never would have imagined being here to ask your help, but I'm here. Who would have ever thought? While my future is uncertain this time, I have the experience, knowledge, a passion for plants and flowers. I wish to share my knowledge with this community and help whoever is interested. This disaster has drastically changed my life. Even though I have lost greatly, I live life with no regrets. My memories are mine, and then still I'm healthy in the afternoon years of my life. I deeply love farming and want to continue being a farmer. Your financial assistant, assistance is greatly needed to have this industry thrive again and take it to even the next level. The potential is there, and now is the time to utilize the knowledge and resources that, resources that have among the farmers right here on the Big Island. The cut flower industry of orchids in this community, it took a sit back about 70%. While I was practicing this industry, it was great potential for lifestyle, for income, and only thing I can say about it is been beautiful to me. If I was to die tomorrow, I still go away with happiness because I have lived a dreamful lifestyle here. But like I said, I got a lot of vitality in me yet. <laughs> and not just me, there is a lot of other fellow farmers out there in a very same situation. I wish they were all here. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, they're not. So thank you for listening for my story. I do have hopes. I'm an eternal hopeful. Like I said, this community has been great to me after 30 years, so thank you. I know you guys do the right thing. Thank you, Joseph. That's a nice story. Um, Smiley Burroughs? <laughs> what a nice name. And Nancy Seifers. My neighbor to make me emotional. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> Thank you so much for uh, hearing us. Um, I'm smiling. Oh, yes. Good morning. 
Yep, that's my next door neighbor, and uh, <laughs> and I love him dearly. And yes, we had incredible farms, and uh, he was the last person I was with when we were leaving Kapoho, and he said, I'm staying. None of us knew what would happen. And uh, so, yeah, every time he gets me, every time, so I'm, I apologize, but aloha. My name is Smiley Burrows. I've lived in Kapoho taking care of Green Mountain since 1997. Green Mountain is a 257 acre crater that still exists, but is inaccessible until county roads are restored. We hosted several community educational events, including Kua Okala, public charter schools, Makahiki games, various music events, and I ran a Friday fruit market, which supported sustainability in my community and uh, and I loved sharing the aloha and meeting all of the tourists that really helped Pahoa economically down in that region. Okay, where am I? One thing I want to continue to press upon the state is that the big island attracts visitors because of the lava. Our community in the past has benefited from previous eruptions. My husband worked on a lava tour boat. He's also a Hawaiian fisherman. I support the boat ramp, and, uh, and the lava made lots and lots and lots of money bringing people to Volcano National Park and Puna, where it was behaving at that time. So I ask that these funds be granted and allocated to the actual victims of this disaster, which are the people of Kapoho and Lower Puna. I created a petition to show the support of our community to specifically address funding the restoration of county roads, which I believe is the priority to our recovery. To date, 3,316 people have signed the petition. The signatures and comments are attached. In order to strengthen our voice, we have organized Imua Lower Puna, which is a coalition representing the homeowner associations of our area, of all affected property owners and the affected residents. We've created a website for the voices to be heard and to support our recovery. So mahalo nui loa. Um, and one other thing I do wanna share is I love Ashley Kierkowitz, Councilwoman Kierkowitz has great insight and um, I see that, that her vision in, in beautifying Pahoa, in uh, bringing somebody to come and do an incredibly beautiful abstract mural, mural. it's not depicting houses being taken by fissure eight. Um, it, it's very nice and I think she as well as the artists would be willing to collaborate with the local artisans and children. Um, so I give her kudos on, on her insight on um, bringing Pahoa back and so yeah I'm also very in favor of that and everything Ashley's doing so thank you all very much yeah thank you very much smiley yeah Nancy aloha Can you, is that good okay um nice to see all of you again thank you so much okay so I won't I'll spare you my story but most of you know it um lava locked Taxpayer, school teacher, farmer, <laughs> right? Isolated off of 132 in Kapoho, um, still wanting to go home. Um, bless you, folks, who got 1180 on the 1180 on the hearing for tomorrow. Um, so you're being proactive by trying to accept the money before they give it to us. I like that, you know. Open the purse, get it ready. Yay! So I commend you, and um, I also am here in support of um, resolution 90 and 91. Um, and I applaud you for um, being willing to accept those funds, prioritize them, um, manage them, oversee them. We'll be looking at your monthly expenditure reports, hopefully before it gets spent, not just after it gets spent. But um, um, so we appreciate you um, willing to take that 60000 and oversee it. We trust you. Um, I have a couple caveats, and uh, as usual. And uh, I guess my main concern is that this disaster recovery money, I'm, I, I think it should stay in the disaster area, right? Hello. Um, 
and, and I don't think it should be spread island-wide. Um, maybe some, if, if there's any left over, but um, please, I'm asking you folks as overseers of this money to make sure that the uh, lava disaster folks uh, receive the benefits of that money. That's my first caveat. The second one is, when I read through 1180, and I know there's no amendments to it, I don't hear the word roads. I hear mitigation, and I hear, you know, mental health services and displacement and homelessness, you know. Yay, we, we have been homeless. It is affecting our mental health, right? But we're strong. Pune is strong. And um, so there's no mention of road recovery. 132, 137, Upper Pohoiki Road. We're concerned about that. The county put out a notice yesterday saying by October 5th there will be um, a temporary road. I hope some of this 60000 is going to help pay for that. I trust that. I was so heartfelt moved by you folks on November 3rd when you passed Resolution 732. It was passionate. You guys really listened to us. Um, you know, the news is taking notice of us now, right? They're flying in with us. They're walking in with us. Um, they're, they're, they're seeing how heartfelt these stories are for these families with children and the farmers and such. Um, so um, it's been eight months now. I don't know where else in the United States or even on this island or this state that 100 plus people and 54 homesteads would be left stranded for so long? October 5th, that would be nice, but that's over a year and a half, right? I hike in, my house is, my house, my house is standing strong, right? But it needs my help. And so, uh, in conclusion, families and farmers and taxpaying residents, we trust you. You know, in your acceptance speech for being the chair, you know, you named us as number one, Aaron, and uh, all of you were so uh, supportive of us. So we trust you. We first uh, would like you to prioritize um, this money, and I want to say special, special mahalo to Miss Ashley and to Mr. Matt. You guys are our young, strong, uh, smart voices of Pune. Thank you. I support 90 and 91. Uh -huh. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you very much, Smiley. Are you guys going to be hanging around for a little while? Yeah. I mean, we probably won't be yeah. calling you guys up, but, you know, just, yeah. We you don't want to see my pictures on my phone or anything. No. <laughs> okay. Next, we have Catherine Marchese. Marchese. Hi. Good morning. My name is Catherine Marchese. I'm a resident of Kapoho. I'm um, one of the lava-locked properties also. Um, I'm here in support of Bill 29 for the FEMA money. Um, I want to thank you all for your very hard work. I know this has been an extremely hard year for everyone involved, not just the residents, but all of the government officials who have been working so hard to help us figure out what we need to do for our recovery. So I wanted to thank you very much for that. And I also want to encourage you to please accept any and all funds that are offered us because, as you well know, we're going to need a lot of money to get back on track. Um, I wanted to address this support of Bill 29 because it says that the funds would be used for long-term case managers services for people who were displaced and impacted by Kilauea eruption. I think that this needs to be defined. What is the long-term case management services and who are going to be making these decisions about what they are? Um, I think the community needs to be very, very involved every step of the way to make sure that the studies that you are funding are things that we actually do want and do need. I think that's really crucial. I'm sure you're aware of that, but I just want to point that out. Um, and that the funds that are accepted and offered are delegated directly towards the recovery of Kilauea volcano. Um, and that it isn't channeled into other areas. I've heard things like, you know, replanting Banyan Drive, and there's been other things going around about how some of that funds will be worked and used. I just want to really emphasize that it needs to stay in Pune for the Kilauea volcano recovery. That's it. It should not be channeled anywhere else to Waimea. I've just heard other th little pieces of things. This, and I know there might be a lot of misinformation out there. And we do really appreciate your efforts to keep us well informed. That's so important. 
So yeah, just once again, just to write, um, reiterate that I think the community really needs to be involved in what these long-term case management services are. And I know that you know, money does need to be spent on studies, but I hate to see these budgets where 500,000 to study this and 300,000 to study that, you know, when I'd rather just see that, okay, 500,000 to do this. So I know there's no way to get around it, but as much as possible, less studies, more action. And specifically, the very last thing is that we need to have this money allocated for road recovery. And I know you've heard it over and over again for the last six months. But to me, that is the number one thing that we need the money for. And as Ms. Seifers pointed out, there's nowhere in any of these bills to specifically say for road recovery. So one more time, let us remind you that the road to recovery begins with a road. Thank you very much. Whether you know it or not, you know, we had designated two people on the council to be our point people at the legislature. Sue Lee Loy and Ms. Ashley Kirkowitz, and they were supplemented or augmented by Tim Richards and Mr. Connie Ali Klein-Felder. Um, and, you know, I think the, the proof is in the pudding. You know, they delivered. But I wanted to make the comment about what you just said. You want to see action. That's exactly the message that the legislature gave us. So I just wanted to, you know, respond to that. We don't normally do that, but just wanted to um, reassure you that that's the message that the legislature told us. Thank you know, they want to see action. Thank you for this opportunity to testify. Um, I'm here for road recovery, and if you're tired of hearing road recovery testimony, then hopefully we can recover the road soon. Um, so I'm sure you're all aware, 70% of the disaster victims, uh, and by disaster victims, I mean lost or isolated homes, lived along Route 132 and 137. Um, so the coalition that Smiley referred to, Imua Loa Puna, was created really to ensure that the taxpayer disaster funds goes to prioritize and allocate it to disaster victims and areas. I understand the entire island felt the impact of the eruption. I really do. But imagine now that the eruption is officially over, you still can't go to your home. The home you built lived in for decades and paid taxes for decades, four million to the county alone a year from Kapoho. In addition, had crops like my neighbor, Joe Kekedi, had orchids that contributed to the entire island's economy and can do so again. Not only have some of us lost our homes or can't go back, now it feels like we're fighting for what Senator Rudiman has says, uh, says is surely one of the most basic government services. While my own house is gone, I still own property in Kapoho, and I have property rights. I still want to return when the roads are rebuilt. It would be a great relief to the 500 out of 700 homes that were destroyed that if the council could um, communicate to the community that even Route 137 along with Route, I, I know the announcement with Route 132 was made yesterday, but 137 was not included. Um, and Kapo'o Kai to Four Corners is only 1.17 miles to serve most of the victims of the lava flow as measured by lost homes. 1.17 miles, not a very long road to build. Um, I would like to, um, in support of the resolutions, I would like to ask the county to be um, transparent with where the allocation of funds will be going and also just the logic of decisions made. I know this is going to be a little controversial for me to say, but announcing an arbitrary six-month moratorium appears also to be selective as PGV has built a driveway right next to where residents with existing homes need access and Poiki Road is completed to a recreational area and still no roads for disaster victims to their homes. I trust there's a sound explanation that the community would benefit from great from hearing. And so that's what I'm asking for in terms of communication, just transparency and also just reasoning as well. Um, I think we can all agree that, the, that no one can predict where lava flow will be going. Um, you know, there's risk assessments being done, I understand. Um, you know, some scientists consider Hualalai to be more dangerous due to its unpredictability. Some could argue Mauna Loa. Disasters are a threat to many populated areas of the world. Wildfires in California, flooding and hurricanes in coastal areas. Kapoho is now safe from flooding, 
um, does not have the fire dangers of West Hawaii, um, and no risk of landslides. We live on the Big Island, and we choose to live here. We choose to buy property here and raise our children here and retire here. We do not choose to live here because this is the only area we can afford. One of the greatest blessings for me um, coming out of this disaster is getting to know my community more um, and supporting in unity uh, the recovery of our area. And so I'd ask this council, please, please prioritize and allocate disaster funds to the disaster victims who lost their homes and are still isolated in the disaster areas. Thank you. Thank you, Susan. That was a lot of thought-provoking uh, statements you brought up. And I know I have a lot of people who are chomping at the bit to agree with you, but we're not going <laughs> to let them do it right now, okay? <laughs> I also want to support 8719 for the mural. Sorry, I forgot oh. that one. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much. You. Okay, Deborah Smith and... Betty Oberman. Okay, so I'm Deborah Smith, and um, thank you all for allowing the opportunity to speak. Um, I am one of the isolated ones in Kapoho with land left. Um, a little, I'm supporting resolutions 90 and 91 in terms of getting keeping the money in our community. Um, a little background: originally, we had had property up um, near geothermal, and a little over six years ago, we were feeling like, oh, it's a little too scary up here. We're going to go to Kapoho. So we go to Kapoho and uh, buy property in the farm lots. And um, unfortunately, we lose our home, but we still have an acre of land left. And if we'd stayed up by geothermal, our house would have been is still there. <laughs> so just ironic in that term. Um, for us, getting back to our property is is all we want to do and we want to we have greenhouse there we have fruit trees um, it's our life and it's really important to have the roads back and for the rest of the community we are a community and and like susan said we chose to live there and we want to return um, it's not we don't want to be pushed off to some other place um, we accepted the risks of living on an active volcano, as all of us do. We all live here, so you know we're all affected, no doubt. But I think initially we need to get keep the money in our community and get the people back to their lives, being able to be productive, to you know to pay the taxes again, and, um, and that's all. That's all I'm asking for. Thank you. Thank you. Here. Um, I'm Betty Oberman. I have lived in vacation land over um, close to 19 years. I thought I'd spend the rest of my life there. Um, I've served in the community. I've been on the water board, uh, all those subcommittees, meter reader, mailbox coordinator, and the last 10 years neighborhood watch. Um, I'm in support of what everybody has said here, and I may be short because I have this cough. Um, I'm here to request that we continue to proceed to reopen 132, 137, the Va'a Va'a Road, um, Po'oiki, we have farmers, or orchards, growers, and many fruits, vegetables, and flowers. Orchards from, orchids from Kapoho uh, sat on Obama's table, as the list goes on. We grew many palms that provide the landscape for many Kohala resorts. Our farmers are not buying from the distributors of fertilizers and other supplies. I was in BEI the other day, and their business is doing a lot less than what it had been doing because we're not up and going. Um, they're not buying sales or farm equipment and, and supplies, and the list goes on. And there are folks from everywhere that have been affected from Kapoho. Tourists uh, in the Kapoho area, as you're well aware, 70% have lost their homes, the income, and the county's lost this tax base. Um, tour companies have had to adjust with less to tour. Vacation renters are going elsewhere. We supported Pahoa, and they need us as we need them. We built a community, and now, like a pool table, we are scattered. Uh, somebody hit the cue ball just dead on the head. Um, some have not fall. Some have not fallen into the pockets because. We want access to go to our properties we own, and 
we have rights to return. Yes, many of us have private roads, but access was through the county roads. We don't need a paved highway. We just want access, and we'll take it from there. Yes, under this county road was water access. We also need to look at that and or go to catchment along with solar. Uh, millions of dollars in disaster have been allocated to help recovery. We who have been affected the hardest should have some priority. I have heard talk of many going to school, money going to schools, and that's great. If we cannot go back, then those who have enrolled in these schools go someplace else uh, since we have no homes. Home is where our heart is, relocating us to the, to the heart out of our community. Um, please don't shut us down. Don't take 30 years. We need your help now. Also, um, Green Lake has been a cultural resource for many, and we need access to go back uh, with the graciousness of Smiley. Um, thank you. Thank you very much, Betty. Okay. If not, I'm going to close public testimony, and we'll move on to our order of business. Thank you, Chair. Um, and for the members uh, in the audience, this is the uh, most appropriate vehicle for us to share a lot of what had happened at the legislature as we began to secure the money uh, that would help with the recovery of Puna. Uh, myself, Councilmember Richards, and Councilmember Kirkowitz attended the hearings, which was by far uh, unprecedented unprecedented action by the legislature to demonstrate to our island how much they supported not only us but the recovery of Puna and at that hearing a lot of questions were being asked of the legislature along with myself councilmember Kirkowitz and councilmember Richards <clears throat> Diane Lay of Research and Development also provided testimony. And it was through the, that lobbying effort and the questions being asked by our state legislature that the legislature found, one, that they wanted to give them money, but more importantly, that this body exercised some control to ensure that those resources would be put to good use. And I've heard the message, the road to recovery starts with the road. But my simple task was, the road to recovery starts with resources. It starts with money. And that was my laser focus. And that's what I helped deliver. In addition to the monies, the legislature provided further oversight in their language. And later on in the agenda, we'll see that in a different resolution. But I also wanted to address some of the testimony that was being provided. And I do really thank Ms. Nancy Sievers for acknowledging the trust that this body is providing to the constituents of Puna and just the island as a whole. And you're absolutely right. And that's because we have phenomenal leadership in our council chair, Aaron Chung. He, he directed us. He provided a goal and a mission for us at his inauguration to tell us what we were going to do for the next 24 months. And I'm very proud here, just four months into his tenure as chair, to bring home $60 million for this island. So really, thank you for acknowledging the trust in this body. But really, the thanks goes to our chair for demonstrating leadership. Um, I do want to walk back to a comment, I think it was Ms. Kim, who asked about the sound explanation to the community on what's going on. Um, and unfortunately, because this body is covered by the Sunshine Law, so many of these conversations are siloed. Um, but I want you to know that myself and Ms. Kirkowitz 
are, we're asking these very hard questions. But I also want to take this opportunity to ping the administration that they need to do a better job at messaging because there is a lot of misinformation out there. There is a lot of inaccurate assertions out there. And that actually hurts the recovery process. And so I've said this before and I say it again, I stand ready along with my fellow, fellow colleagues to demonstrate back to the community how we truly serve community. And it is with listening, gaining your trust, and doing actionable things so that you folks can recover. Um, I'm going to leave it right there because there's other items on the agenda where we can expand a little bit more. Uh, with that, I will ask my fellow colleague, Ms. Kirkowitz, to jump in on this conversation. I yield the floor, Chair. Thank you. Chair, if you'll indulge me. Yes, please. Thank you, Ms. Lilo. I'll, I'll keep my comments short. Um, you know, I've been on the council for a few months now, but I've been blessed with um, tremendous responsibility and opportunity by Chair Chung. Um, to work with Ms. Lee Lloyd to really lead the effort to champion the needs of Puna and our island at the state legislature. So, as you know, um, in February, there was a big press conference for, for all of us to acknowledge the work that this council has done in partnership with our state delegation. And so we've been gifted $60 million, 20 million is a subsidy to the county, and 40 million is to be used um, in matching funds for non-state funds for federal money. But the work's not over. You know, Smiley and I continue to go to the legislature. I'm on a flight to Oahu tomorrow to meet with the Senate Committee on Public Safety and Military Affairs because House Bill 1180 HD1 will be heard there. It's crossover period. And so I want to make sure that I'm there representing community and answer any questions that they might have about what our plans are for helping Puna to not just to recover, but to really bounce back and to be revitalized. I mean, I don't know about you, but I've got a lot of energy and spirit and passion and heart that I am driving into this community. And so I'm really stoked to be working in partnership with all of you. Um, yesterday, the administration did release a progress report on Highway 132 temporary road recovery. You wanna know why that happened? I shot an email and I asked for a meeting. I said, we have community asking these same questions. I have been asking the same questions since I've been in office. We need answers, we need a timeline. We need to show the community that work has been happening. That way, you folks are aware of everything that's on the plate, on our plates. That way you're aware of just how complex and layered all of these decisions and processes are. I was just in a meeting with Susan and folks this morning, uh, meeting with our recovery team lead, uh, Diane Lay, who is here. Um, and Diane, if you do have remarks you want to make, I certainly welcome them. Um, but I, I think it was a, a just a great platform for the administration to be really transparent and open with you about everything that we have to consider as we work together to rebuild our Puna. So thank you for being here in support. Um, we're, you know, Ms. Lilo and I are incredibly honored that the legislature has so much faith and trust in us that with the council oversight amendment to that bill, 1180, it ensures that we as a council work in partnership with community and the administration to really direct our future together. So thank you. Thank you, Chair, yield the floor. Thank you. Uh, it was a game changer in my opinion and you know it's all about resource utilization everybody did their part and we're so fortunate that we have one of our former members up there drew kanuha who's now a senator and he was really helpful as well so everybody did their part um but it really was a game changer because you know they spent a lot of time building relationships with the legislature and i my talking point throughout this whole period was if we could get 20 million dollars that's a great win for us. They delivered $60 million. Of course, $40 million of it, you know, um, is going to be a loan, which we hope <laughs> they'll retire at some point, right? That's where you guys got to continue working. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I just really wanted to point out that it was a collaborative effort on the part of, you know, many people. But 
you know, as far as I'm concerned, these two guys really did a you know, bang up job. Tim was there too as well, Matt, yeah, and everyone else. But thank you very much, you guys. Okay, so we have a motion on the floor. Uh, any further discussion? There being none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed, nay, motion carried.